Hey guys, today I'm going to show you uh, something about programming your vehicle using the GM Tech 2 scan tool. And GM calls this programming the service programming system. It's the second option on your Tech 2's menu. And this is how you would update the firmware inside the various modules in your vehicle. I'm going to start off showing you um, an older diesel vehicle from the 90s. And basically what you do is you start off with SPS and you request information. I've already done this uh, before, but I'm going to show you the whole procedure again. So it's initially going to come back and say that it's already seen it. Now one thing we have to do is we're going to have to put the key in the ignition because it's going to need to have the ignition into the startup position without starting the engine, of course, in order to read this data. So I'm going to request information from the ECU. It's going to ask me to make sure that I'm running the right software and everything before I can continue. I'm going to hit the continue button and then I'm going to have to fill in a little bit of information about the particular vehicle's um, brand and year type of vehicle and model. And then it's going to go off and of course the type of fuel. This one's diesel. It's going to take a, a read of everything after it's sure I've given it all the right information and it's going to populate the data. And the first thing it's going to come back it's going to say hey you know you already did this and that's okay, I want to read it again. So I'm going to say, is this been correct? Yes. Now, if I was um, pulling information for a replacement uh, ECU, then of course I'd, I'd have an opportunity to say that that's not correct and change it, but this is the one that's already in the vehicle, so we're going to say yes. And now it's going to tell me to turn the ignition off and disconnect the Tech 2 because it has already read the information. So you see that software number, that part number there, that 093, 00095 number, that is GM's part number for what they call a calibration, which think of it like a, a, a firmware version for the vehicle's um, ECU. Let me take that key out, show you that, get that beep out. Now let me show you a newer vehicle, and then I'm going to show you the vehicle we're actually going to program. So let me pause that and go to a different vehicle. Let's take a look at a newer vehicle that runs on gasoline. I'm going to go back into SPS, Service Programming System, I request info. Confirm everything. Now, before I read it, you know, it's going to tell me that I've already got data in here from the other vehicle we looked at. Again, you got to turn the um, got to turn the ignition so that this procedure can succeed. But I'm going to say it's okay. I want to do this anyway. Again, I'm going to have to give it information about the make and the year and what kind of vehicle we're talking about here. This time it's gasoline. And then we're going to say, okay, go, read it. So it's going to read the VIN and ECU data. And notice this time we get a whole bunch of different part numbers because there are many more modules, even in 1998, for gasoline than there are for diesel. The diesel just didn't have as much uh, electronics build out yet. And again, it would ask if this VIN is correct, yes or no. I'm going to say that this VIN is correct because it's the one for the vehicle. At this point, it's downloaded the data that it needs. Now, the way this remote um, programming works, when you when call remote mode, is the Tech 2 has now stored all the data for these various modules and these part numbers, and we're going to carry it back to a PC running the software, the TIS 2000 software, Tech Line Information System 2000, and that way we'll be able to figure out if there's any updates to this software. The reason it's called remote mode is the PC will download the updated firmware files onto the Tech 2, and then you'll bring them back to the, uh, the car and actually program them. And GM calls these firmware updates calibrations. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's go take a look at the vehicle we're actually going to update now. You've seen a couple of examples. Now let's do the vehicle that we need to update. So again, I'm going to come into the service programming system on the Tech 2, and again, I'm going to request info. And again, it's going to ask me if I updated the software, so I'm going to continue. And again, it's going to tell me there's already data that's downloaded to the Tech 2 from the other vehicle we were looking at. And we're going to overwrite that by requesting info again. Again, we're going to have to pick the make and the year. This is a relatively newer vehicle than what we had before. Gasoline. And now it's going to tell me that I need to turn the ignition on so that I can read the data. 
now it's reading the data. And you see this has taken a bit longer than it did on the two older vehicles that we showed. And we're asking if this VIN is correct. And I'm going to say yes, of course. And now we've downloaded the information. Now we're going to go over to the TechLine terminal and hook the Tech2 up to that. We're going to see if there's an update for this vehicle that we can select to bring back and download to the vehicle. So now we're over at a PC that's running TechLine Information System 2000, TIS 2000. It's an old DVD-based um, system that used to be distributed to the dealers, the GM dealers, that they discontinued in, in uh, early 2008. This particular version I'm running here, in fact, is one of the very last updates that ever came out uh, for March of 2008. And you know, if you don't have March of 2008, you've actually got something older. Uh, if you got something newer than March of 2008 for North America, love to have you comment so we can get that distributed and updated. But you come in and this only runs on Windows 2000 or Windows XP. That's the era that it came from, right? So this particular machine I'm running on is in my garage. It's a Windows 2000 and it's configured strictly as a TechLine terminal. So I go into the service programming system and I've got some options. The, the, the thing we're going to do today is the Tech 2. We're going to reprogram an ECU. We're not replacing anything and we're going to do it on board the vehicle. At this point, we go to the next screen. It's going to give us some instructions about what we did already to connect the tech to the vehicle and retrieve the current information. And that's step one. And now we're on step two. We're going to bring the tech to back to this terminal and we're going to read that information. Actually, I, I need to do something here. I need to hook it up first. So let's, take, let's go ahead and, and, and do that. We need to take um, our serial connector on the side here, the RS-232, and in this case of this machine, I'm trying to show something a little bit more modern. Instead of connecting this 9-pin DIN into the back, I've got it into a USB adapter on the front, which is what you'd typically be having nowadays. It's very hard to find a vehicle that would have the 9-pin serial port nowadays. And then I'm going to connect my 12-volt DC-AC adapter. To my Tech 2 and power it up on the desk here. Since we're not in the vehicle, we'll power it um, directly from the AC adapter. I'm actually going to back up so it kind of shows you that mistake. I'll leave it in here and won't edit it out. Just so you can see if you get that error, that's what it is. We're going to go back into the SPS, we're going to go back into the same screen. We're going to go ahead and click next. Okay, and we got onto the same step one, step two. Now, if you look at the Tech 2, you can see it's sitting at the um, firmware prompt ready for us to hit enter. And we're going to come over here to the Tech Line terminal and we're going to click next. And if we look at the Tech 2, PC is talking to it, it has reinitialized the Tech 2. Which is normal. That's what it's supposed to do. It's got it into a known state. We come back over to the tech line system. It's asking to confirm the VIN that we're going to be reprogramming. It's going to check its onboard database and then we tell it what kind of programming do we want to do. Well, in this case, we want to do an update to the powertrain control module or the vehicle control module. A lot of different names. ECU is the older name. And you're always going to pick normal as the programming type. Normal means I'm going to pull the programming out of the standard database that the dealers used on any client's vehicle when they brought it in for service with a particular problem associated with a tech node or, or, or a service bulletin. A VCI is a special program that was done for a particular vehicle for a particular customer that the dealer would call GM about for a particular one-off problem. So we don't want to use that. We're going to use normal. At this point, we get a view of the things that are available. So we can see that currently this vehicle is running calibration part number 12587611, which is pretty old. It's not the original one from the assembly line, but it's only one newer. Since this vehicle was manufactured, there have been three firmware updates. The one that's being recommended, which is the only one that's currently available that's newest, 
is one, part number 12598577, and we see that the fix was a new calibration to assure proper catalyst monitoring at idle. We take a look at the previous calibration that we missed on this vehicle at some point in its life, and we saw that it was a calibration to reduce the potential for an engine stall and includes a change to avoid transmission damage during brake torque events. The one that we have on there was one that was in, to improve generic scan tool operation, which is the Tech 2's operation with this vehicle, and to address a cold first to second shift lag. 709, the last one, is the initial factory calibration for this vehicle, a 2000 she 2004 Chevrolet Cavalier that it had. So we want this. We're going uh, to update the software, just like we would update what's on your iPhone. So we just leave the one that's green checked, and we say next. It summarizes what we're going to get. We say next. And now it's going to start downloading that calibration file to the Tech 2. So we see here there's progress on the PC, and then we look at the Tech 2, and we see there's progress on the Tech 2 as this information is downloaded from the PC running Windows to the Tech 2. And again, the dealers and the jargon you'd see in the documentation at the time would call the PC a Tech Line terminal simply because it was running this Tech Line Information System 2000 software. But what we're doing here is the remote mode type programming with the Tech 2. So the Tech 2 is an intermediary between the PC and the vehicle. There is no online web system with this. This is not like TIS2 web, which is the modern system. This is a system that became obsolete in 2007 and was deprecated in the dealerships in the beginning of 2008 and isn't used in the dealers anymore. But it's what you'll come across if you're using a Tech 2 personally. So we come back to the PC and we see our download to the unit is nearly complete. And you got to remember, right, the technology we're looking at here is, is from almost 20 years ago, both PC-wise and diagnostic tool-wise, so it takes a pretty long time to do this. All right, so we've got our information, and we've got some inf information to the technician. Make sure you got proper voltage to the vehicle. Connect the Tech 2 up. Go into service reprogramming from the Tech 2 menu. I'll show you that. And then follow the instructions on the Tech 2 and then some specific information that may apply. After doing this particular upgrade, it may throw a DTC P1336 or a P0315 because we've reset the system. Personally, I rarely if ever see these codes during an update, but if it happens, you have to do a crankshaft position variation relearn procedure using the Tech 2, so it's not a big deal. If we get it on this vehicle, you'll get to see that as well. All right, so at this point, we're done. We can uh, close this and we can disconnect our RS-232 cable and we can power our Tech 2 down and we can disconnect the power and we can take it back to the vehicle. So let's pick it up there. I want to show you an important point, right? So the Tech 2 instructions, excuse me, the TIS 2000 instructions to the dealership technician was to make sure that you connect proper power to the Tech 2. I want to show you what that means. Here you see the DLC adapter coming from the Tech 2 cable going into the uh, the diagnostic port on the vehicle and you see I've connected our AC uh, power adapter to this. This is very important, right? So when you're on the bench, you'd connect this adapter to the Tech 2's um, uh, connector at the handset. But when you're in the vehicle, it needs to be connected down here. And the reason for that is we're working on two different electrical circuits here, right? We've got the electrical system of the Tech 2 and we've got the electrical system of the vehicle. And we want the Tech 2's power with reference to the vehicle's ground. So that's why we connect it down here. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you obviously want to make sure you have a good strong battery. If anything goes wrong during this programming, you could brick the module and that would make the vehicle completely inoperative, right? So the main way to avoid that is to make sure you've got a good battery, good charge, and that you've got AC power on the Tech 2 unit supplied down here near the connector. All right, let's go back to the unit and let's complete the procedure, right? So we've got everything downloaded from the tech line terminal into the tech 2. And so now we'll be able to go in to service programming, just like we did before. And now we can say we want to program the ECU. So notice we have an additional choice here now because we've got downloaded data and the tech 2 detected that. So I'm gonna say, yes, I want to program the ECU. And it's gonna ask me, all right, I'm gonna do this VIN and this particular software part number. 
I say OK, continue. Now it says turn the ignition on with the engine off. So I'm going to do that. OK, I'm going to hear some beeping from the vehicle. My battery's fully charged. I've got my Tech 2 with alternate power. I'm going to say continue. We're reading the data off the vehicle and we're beginning the programming. And again, this is just like operating uh, an update for your iPhone, your iPad, um, not unlike updating your PC with a Windows update. We're updating the software on the built-in computer in the vehicle. So at this point, um, the Tech 2 and the computer on the vehicle have shook hands. They've agreed on communication protocols and the Tech 2 is beginning to download the software that was downloaded to it from the PC down to the engine control module itself. And you can see this is just blindingly fast as we work through this kind of technology. Um, on this year vehicle, we do not have a controller area network. We're working off class two speed uh, interconnect uh, data between the components here. So this is the probably the slowest Although I guess if I was to go grab a, a, a much older vehicle from, say, 96 or 95, it might be um, a little bit slower still. But as long as we get to 100% without any errors, it's a good day. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and lead the video going here and talk a little bit more about this. So when this finishes and it gets to 100%, uh, we'll be told by the Tech 2 information to turn the ignition key back to the off position for 30 seconds. I tend to leave it off for a little bit longer than that. And, and, and then I turn it back on with the Tech 2 disconnected in order to make sure that I'm not seeing any problems um, with any kind of lights on the dash. Sometimes uh, briefly uh, with some model vehicles, some of your vehicles, I've seen a, a, a security light come on on the dash as the ECU tries to relearn different um, then coded components in the vehicle such as the radio and that's okay that's normal just leave the key on uh, or even go ahead and start it and that should go off uh, but mainly what we're after is those two codes that we saw in uh, the TIS 2000 information that we're trying to avoid having to do a crankshaft relearn procedure so hopefully this particular update won't erase any of that data and we will just be able to get out of this with a quick update and a restart of the vehicle all right we're 100 percent done and uh, the Tech 2, I'm sure, is confirming the programming was successful with the vehicle. I'm seeing some, this would be normal, I can't show you the, the camera because it happened too fast. You'll see some of the gauges on the vehicle move and jump around, and that's okay. That's normal. So I'm going to turn the ignition off. I'm going to hit continue here. At this point, I, I'm, I'm really done. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the ignition key back in. Going to do a start of the vehicle and we are good to go. No lights in the dash, everything's good. So that's how you do a remote Tech 2 programming update on your ECU information using TIS 2000. I hope this vehicle helped you out. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.